This video is sponsored by Squarespace. So you want to join the hobby. Where do you get models? What brushes do you need? And what techniques should you start with? It's all answered right here, right now. You can't start miniature painting until you have supplies. First, miniatures. If you're playing a specific miniature game, you're all set. If you're into D&D, check out Reaper or Dark Sword. If you're looking for display quality miniatures, look at Big Child Creative or Hera Models. And if you 3D print, look at Loot, Crypto Studios, or DM Stash. Of course, there are a million more miniature producers. List some of your favorites in the comments. To prep your model, you need to remove mold lines, assemble, and fill gaps. For assembly, you'll need small snips, an X-Acto blade, a file, and sandpaper. You want to remove all mold lines, 3D print nubs, attachment points, or other imperfections. However, make sure that whatever you're removing should actually be removed and is not meant to help assemble your miniature. Once the imperfections are removed, smooth out any cut marks with a file, then sandpaper. If assembly is required, I use Gorilla Glue Super Glue, but plastic glue is amazing if that works with the material you're using. Plastic glue melts the plastic you're using and fuses the pieces together, but it only works with hard plastic, not resin or other material. For extra hold, you can also score your plastic by cutting into the material. Scoring gives the glue a better grip and thus a stronger hold. You can create an extra secure attachment point by pinning. Pinning is done by drilling a hole into both pieces of your model with a small Dremel. Then glue appropriately sized wire into the hole, then applying glue to both the model and the pin. For gaps, use Milliput or Green Stuff. I prefer Milliput as it can be sanded, but Green Stuff holds better detail. For both materials, you'll need silicone tools, preferably dipped in water. For both Milliput and Green Stuff, combine equal amounts of the two different colored putties. Start small, you can always make more if you need it. But once the putty begins to harden, it's done for. Once the material is fully mixed, place an appropriately sized ball or snake onto the desired area and begin to smooth it with a damp finger or a damp tool. If you have problems with fingerprints, wet an old brush and smooth out the surface. Remember, Milliput can be sanded smooth, but green stuff does not. It just rips. Mini in hand, let's talk about what else you need to get started. Most importantly, you'll need a round brush, identifiable by the full belly and nice point. You'll need a large round brush in a size one or two, a detail round brush in size zero or double zero, and a flat or domed brush for dry brushing. You'll also need a few brushes that you are either okay with ruining or are already ruined. Round brushes are perfect for miniature painting because the belly of the brush holds a lot of paint, while the fine tip allows for precise application. The most important element in your brush is that it has a good point. It is possible to paint an entire model with a size 1 brush, even the eyes. However, I prefer painting my eyes with a smaller brush. When using a smaller brush, the paint begins to dry a lot faster than on a larger brush, making it more difficult to work with. So just keep it in mind, the smaller the brush, the shorter the working time. Let's take a minute to talk about Squarespace. I love my family, but they have no idea what I do on the internet. With Squarespace, I have an easy platform to share everything I do with them and the world. Squarespace's galleries are customizable, my social media feed can easily be integrated, and I can even sell my merchandise via their print-on-demand services. Whether you're looking to share your work with your parents or fans across the globe, Squarespace.com has everything you need to start a business or launch your online presence. To make your custom website, check out squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com slash lilamev and use the code lilamev to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. All right, back to painting. For dry brushing, you'll need a domed brush, a tightly packed brush that is usually circular in shape, or a flat brush. Dry brushing is done in areas that have a lot of raised texture and is a way to quickly apply midtones and highlights to an otherwise very detailed area. I prefer a domed brush, as flat brushes tend to leave a more obvious line denoting the path of the brush. As for brush material, I recommend that your main brush should be made of sable hair, as synthetic brushes will always eventually begin to curve. If you are okay with spending less on brushes but going through them more quickly, then a synthetic brush will be fine.
but if you want a brush to last hours and hours of painting, then you'll want a sable hair. My favorite sable hair is Winsor Newton. My go-to synthetic brushes are from Game Envy. When using paints like washes, contrast paints, or metallic paints, I recommend using synthetic brushes, old brushes, or cheaper brushes. These paints are harder on your bristles, and therefore you don't want to use them on a really nice brush. Beyond brushes, I also recommend a wet palette. A wet palette keeps your paint wet and working for longer. Putting your paint on a dry palette, or really anything but a wet palette, causes your paint to begin to dry as soon as it is placed in open air. I use a commercially made wet palette from Redgrass Games, but Game Envy has a great one as well. You don't need anything like this if you are just getting started. I'll list a few videos on how to make your own wet palette in the description box. Finally, it's so important to take good care of your equipment. I just did a video on this topic here. A few last minute things you'll need. Good lighting, preferably white light. Something to hold your miniature, as the grease from your fingers can cause your paint to rub off, like a pill bottle or the hobby holder from Game Envy. And a blue poster tag to temporarily hold your model while you're painting. On to actually painting! First is primer. Primer is needed for the paint to grip onto. Some minis claim to be pre-primed. Ignore that. Prime it anyway. Priming can be done with a rattle can, an airbrush, or a paintbrush. I dislike rattle cans as it can leave a texture, but it is great for batch painting, armies, and the like. An airbrush is ideal, but is expensive and has a learning curve. If a rattle can or airbrush isn't your speed, the Steinle Res Primer can also be painted on with a paintbrush. If your primer or paint doesn't stick to the model, rinse your model under the sink with a toothbrush. You can see the importance of a primer here, where areas that I missed while brushing on my primer refuse to take on the black paint. Next is zenithal highlighting, which is a technique designed to showcase the natural highlights and shadows of a model to make painting it easier later. The technique is usually done with a rattle can or an airbrush, but can also be done by hand with a brush. I don't do rattle cans, but I'll list a video in the description box if you need it. To begin, paint your model black. If you are using an airbrush, I recommend white ink as it can be applied so thinly that you don't need to worry about using gray as a mid-tone between your black and white ink. When applying white ink, build up your gradation slowly and gradually, spraying directly from the top of the model downwards and a little around the sides. Be sure to give the ink enough time to dry between passes, as it can become sticky if overloaded. For dry brushing, mix three or four shades of gray to blend together from your black to your white. Using a domed brush, dab your brush into the paint and then remove the majority of it off to the side on a paper towel. We are going to build up this gradient slowly, so don't rush it. Apply your paint by using a downward strokes and hitting the protruding edges of your model. The more something protrudes out from your model, the more you will hit, and thus leaving more color behind. Slowly move across your gradient. Remembering you can apply more paint or less paint by the amount of pressure you place on the brush and therefore on the model. You also want to keep the majority of your brightest zenithal at the top half of your model. So not only is there a gradient to showcase the shape and form of each element, but there is also a larger gradient going down the entire height of the model. Once you have your zenithal complete, take a picture of it. Once you start applying paint, you probably won't be able to see your original zenithal layer, so we want to take a photo to reference later. Paints. For beginners, I recommend either Pro Acryl or Reaper paints. Both are great right out of the bottle and require almost no thinning. Paint thinning is something you do when your paint is very thick. Thick paint can obscure details, cause texture, and in general is more difficult to work with. Every paint brand and paint color will require a different amount of thinning. I recommend practicing thinning with a thinning agent, like this one from Vallejo. However, it is also possible to thin paint with water. The learning curve is just a little bit steeper. No matter what, the goal is for the paint to flow off your brush at the lightest of touches while still retaining opacity. If there is plow throw on either side of the brush, it's too thick. If the paint is sheer, it's too thin. 
I usually test the paint on the back of my hand, but I am currently looking into better methods of judging paint consistency, as paint can absorb into the skin. In general, vibrant paints like orange and red are less opaque than other colors. To add opacity to any paint, just add white. You can then paint back over that color later with your pure color. Contrast paints and shades or washes are not paints I use very frequently. However, they are staple for beginners. Contrast paints are a combination of a paint and a shade. They have more opacity than just a straight wash, aligning them more with a paint, but they also sink into the recesses to create shadows, like shades. Contrast paints are meant to help you paint faster. A wash is a thin paint designed to sink into the recesses of your model. Just paint your model with a color, preferably a lighter one so that your wash is more clearly visible, and once it's dry, paint the wash on top. The wash will then sink into the recesses and create areas of darkness. This works better on areas with lots of texture, and not recommended for large smooth areas. Techniques. Before we begin, a few notes. Your brush should be wet before you start painting. I usually dip my brush in water, dab the majority off on a paper towel, and then dip it into my paint. Paint tends to stick to dry bristles, so having wet bristles will make the paint flow off the brush easier. Always let your paint fully dry before applying a second layer, or even going over the same brush strokes. You can easily pull up yet to dry paint, causing texture. I recommend a minimum a 30 second sand timer if you need one. Start with the most difficult areas first. I frequently do the eyes before I do anything else. The first technique I always recommend is layering. Layering is the act of stacking layers of paint on top of each other to create a shift in hue or value. I like to compare layering to a pyramid, where each subsequent layer is smaller than the previous step. Your base layer should be whatever color the majority of that section is going to be. For this model, I expected her outfit to be mostly mid-tones, so that's where I'm starting. You can also paint areas directly matching your zenithal. Here I am painting my shadow straight onto the black shades of my zenithal highlighting, instead of painting it with a mid-tone and then layering down shadows later. For a beginner, I recommend sticking with a few highlights and shadows. For example, one or two shadows, one or two mid-tones, and one or two highlights. Of course, you can do more than that, but that's just a start. For you to put your highlights and shadows, reference your zenithal highlight photos. Areas of pure black will be in shadow, areas of gray will be a mid-tone, and areas of white will be your highlight. When asking how much to push the contrast, remember that your zenithal highlight is done with pure black and pure white, so you're going to want to push the contrast quite a bit. However, pushing contrast is a more advanced technique and definitely not something you need to worry about right at the beginning. Another way you can judge highlights and shadows is by holding your model up to your eye as if your eye is your light source. Anything you can see is going to be a highlight. Areas that are perpendicular to your eyes will be a mid-tone, and areas you can't see will be in shadow. Dry brushing is used on areas with heavy texture, like feathers of wings or terrain. For more detail, go back to the zenithal highlighting section. Glazing is taking very thin paint and using it to slowly change the color or shift the hue of previously applied paint. This is frequently done to hide the layers one creates when layering up our highlights and shadows. It can also be used to hide brush marks in stippling or crosshatching. Your glaze should be a 50-50 mixture of the two colors you are trying to blend between. The consistency of your glaze will depend on the difference between the two layers of paint you're trying to blend. The bigger that step is, the more opaque your glaze should be. I recommend starting with a mixture of two-thirds paint to one-third water and testing it on your hand to find the right consistency. Note that you might have to apply your glaze several times to get the opacity that you're looking for. That's just part of the technique. Though thinning can be done with water, I recommend the Vallejo Glaze Medium for beginners. Lining and edge highlighting are done to help differentiate different elements of the model. Imagine lining like the lines in a coloring book that clearly denote the shape of your model. Lining is usually done with a darker color of whatever you are lining around. Or you can do black. Edge highlighting is done with thicker paint and is applied by skimming the edges of an element. Usually edge highlighting is done on the top of an element where the light would most directly catch the edge. 
When you are done with your miniature, be sure to spray it with a sealant or varnish. My go-to is Tester's Clear Coat. A sealant will help prevent the oil from your fingers, rubbing the paint away on your model as you handle it. Alright, that's it from me. You know the drill. Like, comment, subscribe, go join me over on Patreon. Thanks so much, I'll see you next time.